In this lesson, we want to review solving equations that are quadratic in form. So in some cases, we're going to come across an equation that is not a quadratic equation, but can be made into a quadratic equation with a simple substitution. So these equations are known as quadratic in form, and we can solve them using the same methods we used when we worked with quadratic equations. So we can use completing the square, we can use the quadratic formula. In some cases, we can use factoring. So let's take a look at the first example. So we have x to the fourth power minus 25x squared plus 144 is equal to zero. So I want you to notice here how the smaller exponent on x is a two and the larger exponent on x is a four. Generally, when we work with a quadratic equation, you have ax squared plus bx, and I'm just gonna say bx to the first power, plus c is equal to zero. So notice how this guy right here, this larger exponent, is double that of the smaller. It's the same thing here. The larger exponent is double that of the smaller, or you could say the smaller exponent is half of the larger, okay? So we see that pattern, and we also see that we have a constant here, and we have a constant here. So we can say that this equation is quadratic in form. So what we can do is make a little substitution, okay? So we're gonna grab our variable that's raised to the smaller power, and we're gonna set that equal to some other variable. It could be Q, it could be Z. A lot of people like to use U, okay? So I'm gonna stick with that. I'm gonna say, let's let our variable U be equal to X squared. Now, in order to do the substitution, in order to show it to you, I'm gonna use my rules of exponents, and I'm just gonna rewrite my equation. So X to the fourth power, I'm gonna write that as X squared being squared. Okay, I haven't done anything illegal. Power to power rule, that would still be X to the fourth power then minus 25x squared, then plus 144 equals zero. Let me make that one a little better. So everywhere I see an x squared, I'm just gonna plug in a u, okay? Because u is equal to x squared. All right, let me get a little room going here. What I'm gonna say is that I have u that's being squared. Again, just plugged in a u there. Then minus 25u, I'm plugging in a u there. It's not squared because I'm plugging in a u for the x squared, okay? Then plus 144 is equal to zero. Now, if I saw this initially, I would have a quadratic equation and I could solve that either by completing the square or the quadratic formula, or again, in some cases with factoring. So let's go ahead and solve this using the quadratic formula because I think that's usually the easiest scenario. So let's go ahead and put this as a visible one here. I'm gonna say that my a, my coefficient for u squared in this case, normally it's x, but here it's u squared, is a one. b, the coefficient for u to the first power is a negative 25. And c, my constant is 144. So a is one, b is negative 25, and c is 144. Okay, so let's plug into the quadratic formula. So we would have that u is equal to, you've got the negative of b, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, and the whole thing is over 2a. So let's go through and just replace. So you've got the negative of b, b is negative 25, the negative of negative 25 is 25, plus or minus the square root of, you've got b squared. Negative 25 squared is positive 625. So 625, then minus. You've got four times a times c. A is one, so we can just get rid of it. You can put times one if you want, but it's not gonna change anything. And then C is 144. So C is 144. So what is four times 144? Well, that's 576. So 576. What is 625 minus 576? Well, that's gonna give us 49. So we've got a 49 here. And of course, if we took the square root of 49, we would get seven. So let's go ahead and put a seven there. Now, we have two times a in the denominator, a is one, so we basically just have two. So what we have here is that u is equal to, you've got 25 plus seven, which is 32 over two. That would give me 16. And then you also have 25 minus seven, okay, 25 minus seven, which would be 18 over two, which would be nine. So u equals 16 and also nine. So here's the problem. 
A lot of students get to this step and they go, I've got my answer, I'm done, and they move on to the next problem. You're not finished because the original equation was in terms of x, not in terms of u. Okay, so you've got to go back and you've got to substitute again. So let's copy this. All right, so initially we said that u was equal to x squared. So essentially what I can say here, since u equals 16 or 9, I can say that x squared is equal to 16 or 9 because u is just x squared. So now I can erase this and this. I don't need it anymore. Now I want to set x squared equal to 16. And then I also want to set x squared equal to 9. And I want to get a solution, okay? So if x squared equals 16, using my square root property, I know that x would be equal to plus or minus the square root of 16, which is 4, okay? So over here, if I use my square root property, x squared equals 9, I know x would be equal to plus or minus 3, okay? So we have four solutions here. We have that x could be equal to plus or minus 4, so positive 4 or negative 4, and then also plus or minus 3, right? Positive 3 or negative 3. All right, let's look at another one. So we have 2 times the quantity 3x minus 1 squared plus 5 times the quantity 3x minus 1, and this is equal to negative 2. So this one might not jump out at you as being quadratic in form, but realize that you have the same quantity here as you have here, okay? You've got that 3x minus 1, you've got that 3x minus 1. This is typical. See how this is squared and this is basically raised to the first power? If I substitute this quantity with a variable, like again, u, I can solve my equation using the quadratic form, okay? So let's let u be equal to this quantity 3x minus 1. So I'm going to plug in a u there and there. So what would that give me? I would have 2u squared plus 5u is equal to negative 2. And let's scroll down and get some room going. We'll come back up to this in a minute. If I add 2 to both sides of the equation to put this in standard form, I'm going to have 2u squared plus 5u plus 2 is equal to 0. So if I want to use my quadratic formula, I'm going to record the value for a, which is 2, the value for b, which is 5, and the value for c, which is 2. Okay. So let's use our quadratic formula to get a solution here. So we have that u is equal to the negative of b plus or minus the square root of You've got b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So let's go through and replace some stuff. So negative b. b is 5, so negative 5. Plus or minus the square root of b squared. Again, b is 5. 5 squared is 25. Then minus, you've got 4 times a times c. a is 2 and c is 2. So you have 4 times 2, which is 8, times 2 again, which is 16. If I did 25 minus 16, I'd get 9, and the square root of 9 is 3, okay? Down here, you have 2 times a. a, again, is 2, so this is 4. So I've got two solutions for u. I've got that u is equal to, you've got negative 5 plus 3, which is going to give you negative 2, and then over 4. So negative 2 over 4 is negative 1 half. Then another solution is negative 5 minus 3, which is negative 8, over 4, which would give us negative 2. So u is equal to negative 1 half or negative 2. Okay, so we have that again, u equals negative 1 half or negative 2. And we said that u was equal to 3x minus 1. So we've got to set 3x minus 1, which is again u. So we're putting that there and say this is equal to each solution. So it's equal to negative 1 half or 3x minus 1 is equal to negative 2. All right, so let's erase all of this. We don't need that anymore. And we'll get our solutions for x. Okay, so on the left-hand side here, this equation, 3x minus 1 equals negative 1 half. I would add 1 to each side of the equation. So I would have that 3x is equal to, you've got 1 minus 1 half. Now you can multiply both sides of the equation by 2 if you don't like working with fractions where you can just multiply this guy by 2 over 2. It's a little quicker. And you would basically have that 2 minus 1, which is 1 over 2, is your right-hand side. So 3x equals 1 half. 
we can divide both sides by three, or you can also multiply by a third, same thing. Makes it easier if you're working with fractions to do that. So you have x is equal to one half times one third, which is one sixth. Okay, so that's one answer. All right, so over here, I'm just gonna add one to each side of the equation. And we know that this is gonna cancel. I'll have that three x is equal to negative two plus one is gonna be negative one. Divide both sides by three, and I get that x is equal to negative one third. So we get our two solutions here x is equal to one sixth or x is equal to negative one third. Of course, you can write it as x equals one sixth comma negative one third. Any way you want to notate it is fine. All right, let's look at another one. So suppose we had x to the power of negative two minus x to the power of negative one minus six equals zero. So again, look at the fact that this guy right here, it's a negative one, but this guy right here is a negative two. So it follows that same format, right? If I doubled the negative one, I would get to negative two, right? So it follows the same format as a quadratic equation. So I'm gonna let u be equal to my x raised to the power of negative one, okay? So in this particular case, I'm gonna rewrite this using the rules of exponents. I'm gonna say this is x to the power of negative one squared, okay? Again, negative one times two is negative two. Haven't done anything illegal there. Then minus x to the power of negative one, then minus six equals zero. So to substitute here, again, this guy is gonna be u and this guy is gonna be u. So I'm gonna have u squared minus u minus six is equal to zero, okay? So let's erase this, we don't need it anymore. And let's kind of drag this up a little bit. So to put in some visible coefficients here, let's put a one here. This is gonna be my A. This will be a negative one here for my B, and this will be a negative six for my C, okay? So for my quadratic formula, I'm gonna have that U is equal to, again, you've got negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four AC all over two A. And again, you keep working with this over and over again, you're gonna memorize it. Okay, this is just something you're gonna recite in your sleep after a while. So for the negative of b, I know b is negative one, the negative of negative one is positive one. Plus or minus the square root of, you've got b squared, negative one squared is one, minus four times a times c. a in this case is one, c is negative six. So if you did one times anything, it's just itself. So really you got negative four times negative six, which is 24. So you can write this as plus 24, we know one plus 24 is 25. And we also know that the square root of 25 is five. Okay, down here we have two times a, a is one, so this is just two. So I'm gonna get two solutions for u. I'm gonna find that u is equal to one plus five, which is six over two, so that's three. And then also u is equal to one minus five, which is negative four, over two, which is negative two. So let's copy this. All right, let's paste this right here. So again, u is equal to three and negative two. And we said that u is equal to x to the power of negative one. So if x to the power of negative one is u and u is equal to three or negative two, then x to the power of negative one is equal to three or x to the power of negative one is also equal to negative two. Now, how do we solve something like this? Remember what an exponent of negative one means. This is basically like saying that we have one over x. Now you can solve it that way, or if you don't wanna work with that, you can raise this side to the power of negative one and this side to the power of negative one. You can also do that over here. And what's gonna happen is power to power rule, negative one times negative one is one, so you'd have x by itself, and this is equal to, if you have three to the power of negative one, it's one third. So now I'm gonna say or, over here, same thing, x raised to the power of negative one, raised to the power of negative one, x is just gonna be raised to the power of one, right? Negative one times negative one is one. This is equal to, you've got negative two being raised to the power of negative one, so this is basically one over negative two, okay? So you could write that in a simpler format and just say this is negative one half. So x here is one third or x is negative one half. Again, I could write this as x equals one third, comma, negative one half. All right, let's take a look at another one. So we have three times the quantity x over x plus one squared plus seven times the quantity x over x plus one, then minus six equals zero. 
So again, it's the same thing. You have this guy right here and this guy right here that are the same. In one case, it's squared. In the other case, it's raised to the first power. So this is another scenario where you can use your kind of quadratic in form technique to solve. So what I'm going to do is just use a little substitution. So I'm going to let u be equal to this x over x plus 1. So I'm going to sub in there. I'm going to have 3u squared plus 7u minus 6 is equal to 0. So a quick note here. We notice that we have a variable in the denominator here. So we want to make sure that our solution is not negative 1, right? If x ends up being negative 1, if I plugged in a negative 1 there or there, notice how you would get 0 in the denominator, and that is undefined, okay? So you want to guard against that. If you end up with a final answer where x equals negative 1, you've got to throw that solution away because it does not work, okay? So again, let's kind of return to the problem. We've got this set up here. And let's think about this for a second using our quadratic formula. This is my A, this is my B, and this is my C, right? So A is 3, B is 7, C is negative 6. So I've got that U is equal to, we've got negative B. In this case, B is 7, so I'm just going to write it out. Negative 7 plus or minus the square root of. We've got B squared, 7 squared is 49. Then minus 4 times A, A is 3, so 4 times 3 is 12, times C. C in this case is negative 6. So that would give me negative 72. So basically you'd have minus a negative 72, which is plus 72. 49 plus 72 is 121. If I took the square root of 121, I would get 11, okay? So this is 11 here, and this is over. 2 times A, A is 3, so 2 times 3 is 6. So you will have, again, two solutions. U will be equal to, you've got negative 7 plus 11, which is 4 over 6. So 4, 6, we know is 2 thirds, right? You can divide each one of those by 2. You would get 2 thirds there. Then alternatively, you've got negative 7 minus 11, which is going to give me negative 18 over 6, which is negative 3. Okay? So those are my two solutions for U. So now, if U was set equal to the quantity X over X plus 1, then we know that since u equals 2 thirds and also it equals negative 3, I can set x over x plus 1 equal to these amounts. So 2 thirds, then or x over x plus 1 could be equal to negative 3. So let's solve these two equations. And basically, I'm going to drop this down here. I have x over x plus 1 equals 2 thirds. What I want to do is multiply both sides of the equation by the LCD. So I've got an x plus 1 and I've got a 3. So I'm going to multiply this side by 3 times the quantity x plus 1. I'm going to do the same thing over here. So 3, let me kind of slide this down. So 3 times the quantity x plus 1. And you'll see that this will cancel and this will cancel. So on the left, you've got 3x is equal to. On the right, you've got 2 times the quantity x plus 1. So that's 2x plus 2. All right, now this is pretty easy to solve. We'll subtract 2x away from each side of the equation. And on the left-hand side now, I just have x, and this is equal to just 2. So x equals 2 is one solution. And again, one of the solutions is that x is equal to 2. I can erase this because I don't need it anymore. Let's put our or here. And let's solve this guy. So I need to multiply both sides by the LCD. In this case, I just have the x plus 1. I don't have a denominator over here. I just have negative 3. So I'm going to multiply this side by x plus 1 and this side by x plus 1. And this will cancel with this. On the left, I'll have x, and this is equal to, on the right, you've got negative 3 times, this is a quantity here. So it's negative 3 times x, which is negative 3x, and then negative 3 times 1, which is minus 3. Okay, so let's go ahead and scroll down and get a little bit of room going. We want to add 3x to both sides of the equation. This gives me 4x on the left, and it's equal to negative 3. I can divide both sides by 4, and this will give me x is equal to negative 3 fourths. So let me erase this, and we'll say that x equals 2 or x equals negative 3 fourths. So x equals 2 comma negative 3 fourths. And notice how we did not get a solution for x that violated our domain, okay? Remember, we said initially that x couldn't be negative 1, because if we plugged in a negative 1 for here or here, right, we would get a 0 in the denominator. 
that is undefined. So you've got to guard against that. So if you ever have a variable in the denominator and you're working with an equation, you've got to look at where would this guy be restricted? Where is it undefined? And make sure you say that specifically here, x cannot be negative one. It's not in this case, so you really don't even need to put that. You just put your solutions here as x equals two or x equals negative three fourths. So at this point, I think we pretty much have this down and we're just gonna look at one more problem. So we have x to the power of two thirds minus x to the power of one third minus six equals zero. Again, look how this guy right here is double that of this guy. If I multiplied one third by two, I would get two thirds. So let's let u be equal to the variable raised to the smaller power. In this case, that's x to the power of one third. So I'm gonna, again, rewrite this using my rules of exponents. I'm gonna say this is x to the one third power squared minus x to the one third power minus six equals zero. Everywhere I see x to the one third power, I'm plugging in a u. So I'm gonna have u squared minus u minus six equals zero. Now for this particular guy, we can solve this using factoring. It'll be a little bit quicker. We know how to use the quadratic formula. So let's just solve it using factoring. So I'm going to set this up as u and u. Put my zero over here. Give me two integers whose sum is negative one and whose product is negative six. Well, you can do a negative three and a positive two. A negative three and a positive two. All right, so now we can use our zero product property and set each factor with a variable equal to zero and solve. So in other words, I would do u minus three equals zero or u plus two equals zero. So I'm just gonna solve those. This one, I would just add three to both sides of the equation. I would get that u is equal to three. Okay, so one solution is u equals three. Then over here, I would just subtract two away from each side of the equation. I would get that u is equal to negative two. So, or u equals negative two. All right, so let's get rid of all this. We don't need it anymore. Now let me make that two a little bit better. Again, since u is equal to x to the power of one third, I can basically say that x to the power of one third is equal to three or x to the power of one third is equal to negative two. Let's erase all this and let me make that two a little bit better. All right, so how can we solve these equations? Well, I can cube both sides to clear the one third power, right? Because if I have one third raised to the third power, it's one, right, power to power rule. So if I cube this side and I cube this side, I'm gonna get that x is equal to three cubed is 27. So x is equal to 27, then or. Over here, if I cube this side and I cube this side, I'm gonna get that x is equal to, negative two cubed is negative eight. So or x equals negative eight. All right, so let's erase this. And we can basically state our solution as x equals 27, again, or negative eight. 